Hey, what's going on, everybody? What is happening? What's shaking? What's doing? Welcome to Saturday Movie Night. It is Saturday, October the 30th, 2021, 7.03 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the night before Halloween 2021. My name's Dave McRae, and this is Saturday Movie Night. If you're watching after the fact, what is Saturday Movie Night? Well, Saturday Movie Night is exclusive to my, to my level number two and three patrons. Uh, once a month, usually at the end of every month, I uh, put out a poll on my Patreon uh, for my level three patrons to vote on which movie they want me to watch. So I'll put up like six movies and then uh, and then they'll get to vote on it. And uh, whatever one wins, I end up watching. And um, now if you want to be part of let me try that again. If you want to uh, watch the movie live with us, you have to be part of at least level number two on my Patreon. But if you want to be able to vote on the movie that I watch, you have to be part of level number three. But that's what Saturday Movie Night is. It's not It's not a director's commentary. Sometimes I'll be watching movies uh, because I don't get to pick them, generally speaking. You guys do. Sometimes I'll be watching movies that I know a lot about, and I know a lot about the about all the shit that went on into making the film, so it kind of almost is like a director's commentary with me. But often there are movies we watch where I don't know a lot about or I don't know as much. So again, this isn't a director's commentary. This is just friends hanging out, watching movies on a Saturday night. If that interests you, then check out uh, my Patreon via the link in the description below. And I put up uh, six movies this past week. Uh, I only included one Halloween movie. I should have known better that the Halloween movie was going to win. I have to admit, I was pulling for something else. I had Ghostbusters up there. I had Trick or, Tr Trick or Treat up there. I had the original Haunting from the 60s up there. I even had the Garfield and Charlie Brown Halloween specials up there. I was kind of pulling for that. No. No. Whenever it's Halloween, I, I I could have put Rob Zombie's Halloween 2 up there, and I think it probably would have won. Although, I do have to say, I understand that Halloween H2O is a fan favorite. It's not my favorite, but it is a fan favorite. Uh, so that's what we're going to be watching tonight. Who's in the chat room? We got uh, Andrew Stevens here. Tab of the Short is here. Cody Snyder is here. Kenneth Holmes is here. It's great to see you guys here. Uh, we'll see who rolls on in, if anybody else does throughout the show, because sometimes people can't watch live and they end up watching uh, after the fact anyway. Um, so Halloween H2O. Well, this is a movie that came out, of course, in 1998, and uh, I was 19 years old in 1998. I saw this movie in the theater. I saw it three times in the theater. I know what you're thinking, but Dave, you said you're not a big... Well, yeah, but let's not forget, I also worked at a movie theater in 1998, so I got I, I got to see any movie I wanted for free. So I didn't pay to see this movie three times. I just saw it three times. I saw it once with my brother, Neil, and Bruce, who you guys know, that's how far we go back. And... Um, and then I saw it, I, I was working a late night shift at the theater. And this is when the theaters were first, like, you know how they are now with like these multiplex, big, huge theaters with the stadium style seating and all that kind of stuff. Well, this is like mid to late 90s, those types of theaters, common theaters, you know, normal theaters today, those types of theaters with the stadium style seating and the huge screens, and they were just starting to be a thing uh, in the mid to late 90s, at least here uh, where I am. And uh, so it was fairly new. So I was working like the late night shift and uh, I was waiting for my dad to come and pick me up and uh, he said he was going to be a little bit and I thought, you know what, I'm just going to go watch Halloween H2O again. So that's what I did. So uh, I'm not a huge fan of this movie. I mean, certainly it's not the worst sequel in the bunch. Um, but as I've often said, this is like, for me, this is like Halloween, you know, Michael Myers walked onto the set of Dawson's Creek. I know what you're thinking. I think some people like to point out me, the, I, th I think some people like to point out to me the fact that Dawson's Creek came out after Halloween H2O, I think, I think that's what the thing is there. Um, but I'm, t I'm, yeah, okay. It's just people take it literally. I'm talking about a vibe. Pick your 90s show. Okay, it's like uh, Michael Myers walked onto the set of Party of Five. Like, it, it doesn't really matter what type of show. It feels like a mid-90s sort of 90210 vibe um, because, or late 90s, I should say, because of the aesthetic and where it takes place and all that kind of stuff. Not a fan of The Mask. All due respect to Chris Duran, not a big fan of his portrayal of Michael Myers. The music is like, what's going on? The opening's really cool, though, with Marion Chambers. I will say they did, even though she dies in the first like 15 minutes of this movie, 
Her character was more developed, and it's not like she's that developed, but she was more developed and cooler of a character in this movie than she was in Halloween Kills. Nonetheless, that's what we're watching. So I am paused just as the Miramax logo is ending. I It still says Miramax on my screen, but it's just about to fade out. And then, of course, the Dimension logo is about to come on after that with Mr. Sandman. This is an 86-minute movie, just under an hour and a half. Here we go. In fi- Hey, Frank is here. Hey, nice to see Frank here. Awesome. He says, hey, everyone, happy Goosey Night of Mischief or Mischief Night. That's right that's that is correct here we go halloween age 20 five four three two and one all right folks this is it bum 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 mr sandman i like the way the film begins you know with with that that uh, that music hearkening back to the end of of Halloween 2 from 81 and the beginning of Halloween 2 from 81. This definitely looks like Illinois. This is probably still California. But this definitely looks like, you know, it's got kind of the leaves on the ground. And here's Marion Chambers. There she is. Nancy Stevens, ladies and gentlemen. Nancy fucking Stevens. There she is. October 29th, 1998. 43 years ago yesterday. It's my brother's birthday. October 29th. And I love when she steps on the glass and the and the, the music stops immediately. It's great stuff. The opening of Halloween H2O, it's fine. I mean, the opening up until the credits. I don't like the music. It's very orchestral. Orchestral? Or, orchestra? I don't even know what the right word for that is. It sounds like a big orchestra. I've never liked it. But this moment right here, there's probably more suspense in this 30 seconds than, oh, anyway, I'll just be, I'll just be quiet. But I like this. I like when she opened the door and she looked around. There's no, and there's no music, just the elements right now, right? Just the elements, just the elements, no music. You know what would have been cool for Halloween Kills is if the movie began... But see, it's too much screen time. It's too much fucking screen time. Joseph and Gordon love it. I was just going to say, it would have been cool if, if the movie began with each of the legacy characters meeting Michael Myers somehow and then... Demi- I, don't know, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. I don't want to get into that. I believe Joseph Gordon Levitt right here, he was already... Was he on um, Third Rock from the Sun yet? Can't remember. Nah, I better stay here and protect her. Frank Riker says, one thing that this that the franchise was missing after six was those Loomis theory lines. I could not agree more, Frank. Definitely missing that for sure. Yeah. The series has the series has never been able to find to find its its Loomis, you know? It's too bad that I I think in some respect the series was afraid to Yeah. I mean, Sartain was an interesting character. Like I said, I actually liked the Sartain character. I just didn't like what they did with him. Nancy Stevens has got more, has got more screen time here than she did in Kills. This opening here, I don't have any issues with this opening. I've never really had any issues. Yeah, not that I can think of the way it looks, the way it's shot. I do, I I will say that even through here, it's classic sort of, you know, yeah, orchestra, band, music, which is fine. But I, I, it is missing the Halloween feel, the Halloween synth feel. It, it, it's missing Howarth. I will say that. I wonder what this scene would look like if I put some 
one of the soundtracks from one of the older films, like from four or five or six. I wonder what it would look like, or any of the movies. I wonder what this scene would look like, how it would change the feel. It's not bad. It's just, you know. Jesus. But I hate that there's no explanation. I hate that there's no explanation. You know, to where my... Like, they don't even acknowledge it. He was shot in the eyes. He was... He literally was... I mean, look at that inferno. His hands are fine. They never found his body. What do you mean they never found his... Okay. my office it's got it got dark pretty quick then again that's not the first time that halloween has gone from daylight to dark in the snap of a finger cody snyder says dude has a good christian slater vibe yeah why didn't they just keep the h6 mask yeah i wish they would have too man and I'm not a fan of the H6 mask. Like, I'll be honest with you. I'm not really a fan of any mask beyond the first one. I'll be totally honest with you. Well, I do like Halloween 18 and Kills mask. I definitely like that. But why? Because it feels more like the original, right? Um, but the six mask that they use, at least the way it looks on Durand here, I'm assuming it's Durand uh, in the opening here as well. The way it looks on him looks when he steps around the corner, when Marion is on the ground and he steps into the doorway. I really like the way it looks. I don't know if it just is because it looks better on Duran than it did on Wilbur. Because Wilbur, 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 Wilbur was, you know, a little rotund in Halloween 6. And, you know, I just didn't, I don't know. Whereas Chris Duran is more svelte and more like, uh, more like castle-like. I don't like the way he walks though. But in terms of his size, like his stature, he's more castle-like. So man, I don't know if it just looks better or I'm just, I don't know. That little bit of music there, like, da, 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 when you looked at the photo, it was like, oh, that's like the only Halloween thing. I don't like the way he's standing. Just the way, like to me, looking at Chris, and again, this is not a knock against Chris. Chris, like I know him. I just don't like, he looks like somebody dressed, he looks like somebody cosplaying as Michael Myers. It doesn't look like Michael Myers to me. That first shot we see of him in the back at the other door just looks like somebody dressed it. It doesn't it just it doesn't look like Michael Myers to me. And of course she opens the front door here. Oh, that's right. She's got to go to the other side. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. I forgot she leaves her house and goes to the neighbors and sees the kid all fucked up. Frank says, Dave, I remember us saying that Marion's role should have been that of a mentor to Lori and Kills. Oh, skate to the face. Handling her Loomis notes beyond what Sartain read of the dying somewhere afterwards. Yeah, yeah, I, yes. Yeah, I agree. Well, again, for those of you that are watching after the fact who followed me for any length of time, you know that Marion and Brackett were the two characters that I was looking forward to seeing the most in Kills. There's, there, okay, the way he steps into frame there, the way he's walking there, that's cool. That lad actually looks like Myers. Boom, 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 boom. Right here, the way he's walking through the space here, the way it's lit and he turns around. Yeah, it looks, the mask looks better on Duran. That H6 mask looks better on Duran. If that's the H6 mask, six mask there, I, I think it is. It looks better on him than it did on Wilper. It did. It does. It does. It's too bad. Yeah, it's too bad. Oh, there goes. She's cut. It's over. The old, you know what? Like again, it's not, you know, it's 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 90s. It's it's uh scream-esque, you know? But I mean, as far as this movie goes, it's you know, it's I don't mind the opening. I don't mind it. It's fun. You know, and it's shot. It, it, it's, it's okay. It's 
cool. This car he's driving. But I love how it's like there's no mention of where he gets the mechanic suit. There's no mention of where he gets this mask. There's no mention of where he's been for 20 years. It's just, they never found his body. And it's like, oh, come on. Yeah, I'm telling you, that flu in 1998. You want to know why that flu in 1998? Because the internet was in its infancy, you know, for all intents and purposes. I know it had been around for, you know, a number of years. But it, compared to now, it was in its infancy. And he just said it there. Oh, they never found his body. You know, can you imagine that flying today in the world we live in today, 23 years later? with the ease of access to information, the flow of everything. There's no fucking way. Fans would be all over that line like it's nobody's business. They did, what do you mean they never found his body? They found his body? That's it? That's all he got? I remember when I was sitting in the theater as a 19-year-old watching this movie, I remember thinking to myself, what do you mean they never found his body? He was lying there burning to a crisp. How can he see? His hands are perfect. I know, I know. It's just a movie, Dave. Well, I know, but come on. If you're going to fucking make it, you're going you're gonna to be faced with this stuff. A Nightfall production of a Steve Miner film. Shout out to Steve Miner, Friday the 13th, part two and three. I think he did the first house movie too, if I'm not mistaken. Jamie Lee Curtis. Halloween H2O. <laughs> 20 years later. Here comes uh, Tom Kane, I believe this voice actor's name is. He, he does an all right job. He does an all right job. Some people uh, have asked, why didn't they just lift the audio from, from the original film? Well, I don't believe they had the original uh, audio track to do that from. It, because you have to remember that the audio from the original film when he's saying the speech, there's music underneath it and they couldn't separate the two. They didn't have access to the original, the original files, files, the original uh, reels, I should say, because obviously it would have been on a reel. Um, so they had to, uh, uh, yeah, they had to redo it and it's fine. Like it, it's, it's totally, I buy it. I mean, I can tell it's not Dr. Loomis, but it's, it's a, Good enough impersonation that I'm like, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it's a little, yeah. And I understand that this, this, this orchestra kind of thing is, you know, it's at the time, right? Director of photography, Darren Okada. Oh, Harvey Weinstein, Kevin Williamson, and Bob Weinstein. I wonder what Bob's doing now, now that his brother's in prison. What's the scissors there for? Interesting. Based on the characters created by Deborah Hill, John Carpenter. And they had offered, I think John Carpenter was going to well, they wanted Carpenter to come back and direct this, and he. I, so the story goes, he wanted ten million for it. Something. I, at least that's what I heard. Uh, Andrew Stevens says, "I hope they slow the pace down for Halloween Ends and give it more of a '78 and H4 vibe." Mm. I'm not holding my breath. Cody Snyder says, "Yes, Frank, a couple of Twinkies and some death." <laughs> the J Man's movie cave is here. Hey, Jason, great to see you here. Now listen to Laurie Strode's scream. I'm going to turn this up. This scream still bothers me to this day. I don't believe it. It just sounds so fake. Here, I'm turning this up. I love Jamie and Eddie. We all do. But this, this scream I just did not buy. Turning it up here. Ooh. Here it comes. Goes into the closet. We're going to show a little bit of that flashback. Yeah, it's good stuff. <laughs> I 
just, I'm just not buying it. I'm just not buying it. Ah! Ah! It's just the way she stops to take a breath almost, and then and then and then does it again. I'm just, uh, yeah, just not doing it for me. But that's me. There's Josh Hartnett. Josh Hartnett. Whatever happened to Josh Hartnett anyway? Is he doing anything? I mean, I know he had a had a little bit of a career there for a while, but what's he doing now? Or what has he done now? I'm not entirely sure. I'm not entirely sure. Frank says, sounds like she saw a mouse. It does sound like that. I wonder if this movie, but then again, I guess you could say that about a lot of the movies. I would be curious though. It just doesn't look like Halloween. It's now we're in Summer Glen, California. Although I get it. I, you know, but to be fair though, I, I get it. I mean, if you really were hiding or if you, you wouldn't live your whole life in Haddonfield, I will say that. That is true. I just wish maybe they had kept it in the Midwest. You know, instead of, uh, or it doesn't have to be in the Midwest. It can be, uh, maybe she moves from Illinois to, to Maine or Illinois to New York or Illinois to, you know, somewhere somewhere where, uh, you know, you, you can still take advantage of that fall atmosphere. You know, she doesn't have to move to California. She could have moved anywhere. I wonder how old Jamie Curtis here. She'd be uh, it's ninety eight, so she was. Uh, I think she's sixty, fifty, forty. She's. Oh, I think she's a couple. Year, I think she's a couple years younger than me here. I think she's forty. It's crazy. Getting old sucks. Really does fucking blows. There's a sweet spot of getting old. It's usually between about thirty and fifty. And once you're 50, society looks at you like you're fucking old. So I still got eight more years until I'm pretty much done. I'm gone. Society looks at me going, you're fucking 50, bro. You're like 50, bro. You're a fucking piece of shit. She's, no, you're not going to Yosemite. Dia Maria is here. Hey, Dia, great to see you here. Sorry, I'm like, that's okay. That's all right. No worries at all. We're just watching Halloween H2O here on this Halloween Eve. We are 17 minutes and 28 seconds into the movie. Josh Hartnett's looking all sexy and squinting his eyes like he's on the cover of Teen People. Hey. He's talking to Mom Laurie Strode or Karen Tate or Tate, Kara Tate, Lauren Tate, whatever the fuck her name is. I don't know. Now, this guy here on the far left, if I'm not mistaken, H2O experts can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, you know, I, Halloween H2O admittedly is not a movie that I've I've really cared about all that much. But I believe uh, the um, uh, guy, the nerdy looking guy with the schnoz there, he, <laughs> hey, it's there. Um, I believe initially they were going to have a copycat killer and he was going to be the killer as like a subplot. Michael coming up behind her. I don't like it. See, you can fucking even still see, fucking see his eyes in, in the reflection too. You can see his eyes in there as well. I didn't like that. I didn't like that. There's a worse one too. There's a worse one too. When she's out on the street and she sees herself in the, in the reflection of a street store um, window or something and Michael just steps out behind her. It just looks so unscary just looks comical to me like a cosplayer just walking down the street ready to go to the convention or something tab the short says they were cheap dave they were cheap what was cheap i'm missing something what was cheap what did i say oh god help me out tab tabitha sorry tab <laughs> dia says he's so over his mom oh yeah yeah, yeah. fucking over his mom is right Oh, wait. Uh, oh, no, okay. Hmm. Dia says, correct. Are you referring to the the idea that he, he was going to be... Because there initially was going to be a subplot in this movie where they had a copycat killer. And I believe the nerdy guy 
uh, was the one that was going to be him. But then they got rid of that. F from what I remember, anyway. I fucking love this vehicle this woman's driving. What is that? Anybody know what that car is? It's great. It almost kind of looks like it should be like a villain's car. The rest stop, like out in the middle of nowhere. But nothing happens to them. They don't get killed. Oh, the tire's out. He needs another vehicle. Cody says, I'm not over his mom. <laughs> yes, okay, I thought so. I thought so. Thank you, Dia. The J Mads Movie Cave says, Hey, Dave, what is your scariest moment in Black Christmas? Scariest moment in Black Christmas. That's hard to say. It's hard to say. Um, let me think on that. Let, let me think on that. That's a that's a tough one. That's a tough one. Andrew Stevens says, I just realized with Dave's lighting being blue, his H1 poster makes Michael look like he is in the background stalking. Oh, really? Does it look like that? Yeah, it does look like that. He's looking at me. He's getting ready. He's getting ready. just the door casey dia says oh i would never even wash my hands in that bathroom i know me neither imagine he killed the kid took her and like slammed her into the toilet and stuff <laughs> no you could never do that i do like the the h18 scene where james jude courtney drops the teeth over the thing that was cool He just wants the keys. That's a cool shot. He looks back. Yeah, I, I've always liked the way he looks back there. I, I ever, I even remember thinking that looked cool in the, uh, when I first saw the movie in 98 at the theater, I, I remember thinking that was kind of a cool shot. I uh, uh, uh. wonder where that girl is today. Yeah, it just, uh, it's got a very, it's, it's a product of its time, right? I mean, you know, if you're old enough to remember the 90s, which obviously a lot of us are here, and, um, you know, it, 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 and of course I was a teenager through the 90s, so I remember it very well. And um, this feels like a 90s movie. The way it's shot, the way it looks, the aesthetic uh, feels like a 90s film. Is that Loomis on the wall there in that photo? That looked like Loomis on the wall. That can't be Loomis on the wall, is it? Was that Loomis on the wall in that photo? If it is, it kind of looked like him a little bit. If it is, what the fuck is Loomis doing on the wall there? Probably isn't. That wouldn't make much sense. Make much sense. Andrew Stevens says, Dave, is Cochran wants all the kids dead. That's true. That's true. Cochran's the man. Cochran's the man. Absolutely the man. Um, yeah, I don't know what my favorite Black Christmas moment is. It's kind of hard. The, the, there's so many great eerie moments in that film. I mean, Claire in in the attic with the bag over her head and the cat, uh, Claude, you know, uh, licking the bag and then just all the phone calls. And, um, you know, there's, there's yeah, I'd have to, th I'd have to th give it a little bit of thought when I don't have another movie completely in my, in my ears. Yeah. Um, it's a little distracting, but but yeah, I um, there's a there's a lot of good moments in that movie, for sure. Alan Arkin, you're such a nerd. Dia says I love James Jude Courtney. Yeah, he did a great job. James Jude Courtney. Of, out of all the issues that uh, stem that people have with Halloween 18 and Halloween Kills, uh, James Jude Courtney is definitely not one of them. That is that is for sure. That is for sure. 
Jason says, in the last year, Black Christmas is now in my top five favorite horror films. I can't believe I only saw it for the first time three years ago. It's great, man. It's an acquired taste. It's an acquired taste. Not everybody cares about it, you know? Um, uh, it's, I get the, I, I get it, especially if you're younger, right? I mean, you don't, you know, it's, yeah, I, I do get it. I understand. But, um, Black Christmas is great. It's not, it's nice to be able to talk about other, like that was one, oh, I fucking forgot LL Cool J's in this movie. It is funny though. Round melon breasts. Like again, I think you know what? Like listening to this scene, it's funny. Like objectively, it's funny. It's just, I'm one of those guys that just doesn't, you know, I'm just like, this isn't a Halloween movie. It doesn't feel like Halloween, doesn't look like Halloween. Like, this could be fucking a completely, this, this could be a, take Michael Myers out of this movie. Take Michael Myers out of this movie. And this could be a complete, and just add, just make some other, this could be this, could be a fucking Scream movie. This looks like a Scream movie. Cody says, LL Cool J over Busta, come on. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. LL Cool J is better than Busta. But I mean, like, there's no... It's crap, guys. It's crap. It's all crap. <laughs> it's all garbage. It's just varying degrees of garbage. Sometimes there's less garbage than others, but it's all garbage. People after, people are watching after the fact going... I had some guy uh, comment uh, just to... I don't know how long ago, uh, on my Halloween five burning, uh, it's amazing how many people get really upset, like genuinely. And they think I'm serious. Like they think I'm actually gonna, I'm not gonna actually burn the fucking thing, but there's a lot of people that get really dare I say, and I hate using this word cause it's overused triggered. It's so funny that this guy, uh, and, and, and maybe he's watching this. He was like, I can't believe people are so triggered and want to burn Halloween 5. Like, what about Halloween Resurrection and Rob Zombie? They said, yeah, yeah, they're crap too. There's a lot of crap. You know, like several things can be true at the same time. Halloween 5 is crap. Well, Rob Zombie's is crap. Yes, it's crap too. Well, what about Resurrection? It's crap too. And? <laughs> <laughs> but there's some people that get really upset. Like I had a few people go, well, I like Halloween 5, you fucking idiot. It's like, guys, laugh. Why do people take things so fucking seriously? Holy shit. People can make, go ahead and make fun of my favorite movie of the, of the franchise. Part one, make fun of it. Here, I'll make fun of it for you. The fucking acting is fucking hilarious. Oh, right here, right here. Hang on, sir. I, got, I think that just looks like some cosplayer that stepped out in front of the window and, and just, doesn't look like Michael to me. Anyway, the first Halloween, uh, you know, Annie looks like she's 30 because she is. She doesn't look like a high school student at all. What the fuck's with that? Annie's death scene. It's the slice. And then she's like, like, what kind of, like, it's hilarious. Like, what, what happened? I don't know what the fuck is going on. Uh, <laughs> what kind of death scene is that? People think that because I hold Halloween in high regard that I think it's somehow this perfect movie, right? This is where the lack of nuance comes in. Yeah, well, you think Halloween's a perfect movie? It's not a fucking perfect movie. It's not. No, it's dated. How many times have you heard me, heard me say that? The original Halloween is fucking dated, right? I'm, I'm thinking about it within its context. That's how I look at it, is within its context, you know, and, and, uh, and its time frame and its time period. And... Um, Halloween it's fun to it's fun to make fun of in a in a fun way what you like it's fun to poke fun at yourself or have you know sometimes self-deprecating humor and you know whatever like how I you know poke fun at myself when I say I talk a lot you know because I know I do you know but thank goodness I do or I'd have a very boring channel because I do a lot of solo shit you know like I'm always flying solo on this channel so if you're Flying solo on a channel, you definitely need to be able to talk a lot. I 
I love how Jamie Lee Curtis has totally changed her tune on this movie too. By the way, for those of you that are just joining after the fact, maybe in the chat room you want to follow, we're at 29 minutes and, tw and 45 seconds into the movie here. We're flying. But I love how, uh, uh, you know, Jamie Lee Curtis talked very positively about this movie when it came out. Now you ask her about it. She's like basically just calling it a piece of shit. <laughs> What do you think of that, Halloween fans? How do you feel? I don't care what Lori thinks. I don't care. Fuck Lori. Fuck Jamie Lee Curtis. Oh, now come on. You met her at a convention. You wouldn't say that to her face. Fuck you, Jamie Lee Curtis. She doesn't do conventions anyway. Good for her. She's drinking. She's an alcoholic. She's sucking back that wine. Look at that wine. The th uh, J-Man's Movie Cave says, I think The Thing is Carpenter's best. Cody Snyder says, I don't get that. It's a product of its time. Is that good or bad? Everything and everyone is a product of its time. Well, I think what it is is that things can become... It depends, right? There are some, there are some um, stories that... Uh, can be timeless, right? So Halloween is a product of its time in terms of, um, you know, obviously it's dated, it was shot on film and 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 in terms of the production value and the quality and all that kind of stuff um, is is very much a product of its time, right? It looks like a movie from the, from the 70s. However, what is timeless about the original Halloween is the way that it was shot in terms of it being more of that psychological theater of the mind, that tends to be timeless. Now, the production value is older, right? But it's like watching Psycho, right? Psycho tends to be more timeless. So does Rear Window. You know, a lot of those older movies, because they focused a lot on story and substance and execution, they tend to be more timeless over generations. So we're talking about, you know, because they're still making those types of movies today. And generally speaking, when they make those types of horror movies, more of that slow burn kind of stuff, you know, the theater of the mind, they generally play well with audiences, right? So Yes, the production value is dated, but in terms of its its uh, story and its execution, it tends to be timeless. Jaws is another thing there, right? I mean, there are some instances where the shark might look a little, you know, when it comes up onto the boat, but the story and the way it's told is, is beautiful. And it's, you know, that slow burn, you know, more of that theater of the mind with some jump scares in there too, of course, with Jaws, right? It's, ti it's, it's timeless in a lot of ways. Halloween H2O is very much a product of its time in terms of its execution, the tropes, uh, the, the, the music, the, 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 the way that it's, um, it's just the way the story is told feels very much like a 90s horror movie, you know, and, um, uh, that's not a good enough answer. And I know that I'm trying to, I'm trying to think of the, the, the right way to say it. It's like, um, it's it's how it's told is um is it's utilizing a lot of the uh new sorry the 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 reinvented rejuvenated tropes that that scream was able to bring back and make popular again and it's starting it's starting to use those things as well uh the way it's shot the way it looks the just the certain beats. It's the certain familiar beats that you see, you know, in in a Scream movie, you know, in Scream 1 and 2, you're seeing here in H2O. You know, you're seeing these familiar beats with the way things, you know, how the the scares come and how the scares go. And, and, and it just feels dated in that sense. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't really... It's not timeless in that in that same way. I don't feel anyway. So now that I, I'm just speaking for myself, when someone says it's a product of its time, they might have a different reason for saying that. But you're right. I mean, if you take it at face value, yes, everything technically is a product of its time. But how stories are told and how they're written and how they're executed um, can make or break whether something is timeless over decades or kind of stays in one decade and stays there. Uh, and Halloween H2O to me is something that stays there, you know, um, doesn't, it doesn't transcend its decade in, in, in my opinion.
Black Christmas is the same way for me. It's dated, absolutely. It's 1974. A lot of people consider that movie boring, but man, it is timeless in the way that it was told, you know, um, in a lot of ways. Whereas you look at something like Black Xmas from 06, that's very much a product of mid-2000s horror, you know? And that's not something that sort of stands the test of time, as they say. So it's not just in terms of production value and the way it looks in terms of quality. It's about how the, how the stories are told, essentially. How the stories are told. And what beats they use to tell those stories. Are they cliches for its time? Is it because it's like taking Halloween Resurrection, right? How, it's, it's the perfect example. Resurrection was capitalizing on, uh, you know, this new thing called Survivor, you know, and this new technology with webcams and all that kind of stuff and walking around. It's very much a product. It's very dated in that sense. They're, they're using sort of tropes and, you know, there's a line in that movie where one of the girls says, you're this close to getting voted off the island. I mean, a kid watching that today would have no idea what the fuck that even means, you know? And so the way that story was told and the use of, the use of technology in the ways that it did makes it very dated, you know, especially now, you know, because nobody's doing that anymore, you know, essentially. So um, just how stories are told, you know, what are they using? Are they buying into what's popular at the time? Are they buying into what's hip, what's cool? Do they want to exploit that because they know people are going to go see it? Um, anyway, it's nuanced. There's a lot of different variables at play, but generally speaking, that's sort of, it's the familiar beats and how stories are told generally at that time. Whereas Halloween, the original, uh, stories were told like that and continue to be told like that. Michelle Williams. Whatever happened to Michelle Williams? I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure. Take care, Jason. Have fun. Frank says, I think the first Halloween movie we see in the theater is the one we hold in high regard, but no H1 is the best. H H2O is no different for, for some. I totally agree, Frank, 100%. I've said that, I don't know how many times on this channel, I've said that, um, you know, I understand that Halloween H2O for a lot of people, and this is true, for a lot of people, it was not only the first Halloween movie they saw in the theater, it was the first Halloween movie they ever saw. Because Halloween, largely, it's not Freddy, it's not Jason. And, and although there was a Halloween movie in 88, um, 89, it, you know, there was a pitfall. And between 89 and 95, there was no Halloween film. So if you were born in like 85 or 6, and you were like, you know, 12 or 13 or 14, whatever, when H2O came out, I mean, this is your introduction to Michael Myers. This is your introduction into the Halloween universe. So you're absolutely right. For, from a purely um, uh, nostalgia perspective and, uh, you know, being emotionally attached, yes, 100%. 100%. 100%. don't know what the first Halloween movie was that I watched. It was either Halloween 1 or Halloween 2. Um, I can't remember which one it was that I watched, but... Um, but I don't, I, I, I would like to think that I'm objective enough that it's not why it's my favorites. You know, I, I, I think, um, I think they're my favorites because I think they're, they are just better movies and that's why I like them better. Um, but that's me. I'm not saying that I'm better than anybody else. I just think that I, I'm, I'm pretty good at being able to do that. But, um, like, I think the first Elm Street I saw might've been part two. Might have been part two, and then I saw part one. This feels like a Scream movie, doesn't it? Is it just me, or does it feel like the vibe, the way things look, or urban legend? I mean, you could, you could, you could interchange so many different types of mid to late 90s films in here, and it have it feel the same. The beats are the same. Characters are the same. You know, settings are often the same. You know what I mean? That's what I mean. You know, when I say it's a product of its time and and it's and, and it's not, you know. But that's not to say that Halloween seventy eight is is uh, you know not dated. It absolutely is dated. It looks like an old seventies film. Absolutely, hundred percent. It's more about story and the and the beats that 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 they present. 
that are timeless. Dia says, I was born in 87 and Halloween 4 was the first Halloween movie I saw when I was five. Very cool. Very cool. Cody Snyder says, Halloween 78 was the first one I remember watching all the way through. Then two on USA, then later on, on four. Very cool. Very cool. Cody says, not so much for me, though, because the only one I've seen in the theaters is H18. Oh, very cool. First Halloween I saw in the theaters was Halloween 6, The Curse of Michael Myers. And then I saw H2. Actually, I've seen all of them. I've seen all of them except for Rob Zombie's 2. I saw, and, and of course, the, you know, the, um, the earlier ones. So I saw 6 in the theater. I saw H2O in the theater. Saw um, Resurrection in the theater. Saw Rob Zombie's part one in the theater. Hated it so much, didn't bother to see part two in the theater. And then, of course, 18 and, and Kills I've seen in the theater. Now, where's that moment where they use the scream music? Because I know they use the scream music in this movie. There, there's another thing that's like, ah, okay. Where, what is the scene, and maybe it's past, but what's the scene where they use the scream music? One of you guys got to know. Maybe Frank knows. I think this is where she comes out here and bumps into her mother. And her mother says, uh, you know, everyone's entitled to one good scare. It's kind of cute to see her mom. just cute turn this up here you guys are just watching me watch something on the day what do i know you just take care of yourself okay thank you very much we'll see you monday and she gets into the car from psycho right Miss Tate. Uh, As if she'd be driving that kind of wait. car. But I will say this. When you look at Halloween H2O, there is better character development for Laurie Strode. I do think her arc is probably better in, in, in Halloween H2O. Yeah, for sure. It's just not a good movie, in my opinion. You know, um... I mean, it's it's a it's a fine '90s slasher movie, yeah, for sure. But again, I feel the same way about this. Well, I feel more about this than I do '18. It's not. It doesn't feel like Halloween to me. It just feels like somebody's running around cosplaying as Michael Myers, you know. And and, and listen, I know, and this is my opinion only. And I know that some people, not necessarily people in the chat right now, but I know uh, <laughs> Frank says, and poor Bruce saw the terrible seven. No, poor Bruce. I know you're being sarcastic. That's right. That's right. Bruce, uh, he couldn't get in because he was 15. I was 16. I couldn't get in. I wasn't uh, 18 yet in uh, 95, but I, um, I looked older and I sounded older and they didn't even ask me for ID, but they asked Bruce for ID and he couldn't. So he went and saw seven. But um, yeah, like I, I, I understand that for some it can be uh, a pain in the butt that I'm so picky, you know, with certain things because, you know, there are a lot of people out there that genuinely love this movie and, and I think that's great. Celebrate that, right? It's not a terrible, it's not like, oh my God, it's, so it's not like that. I just, you know, I go to the extreme to make points. Um, but I, again, it doesn't feel like Halloween to me. Like right here, we have LL... Cool J at the gates here, talking to this guy. It like, just feels like just a regular horror, just, just a serviceable slasher movie. For me, for me, maybe not for you, but for me, the aesthetic and the tone and the lighting and everything is just as much a character in a Halloween movie. I don't think we realize how much it is until it's gone, until it's missing. You know, even Halloween two from eighty one is is missing a lot of that. It's it it's a it's it's the best sequel still, in my opinion, um, because I think 
uh, Darren Sands had, had had said this on um, the Slaughtered Lamb, and I believe he's right. It looks different from it, from Halloween seventy eight, but Halloween two eighty one is probably the most Halloween, the original out of any of them. Really, at the end of the day, you know, and that could be largely because it was shot in a similar time period, only three years later. They had the same DP, you know, you had the same actress in there, um, you know, but yeah, I, I don't, uh, like this right now, I just see cosplay Michael. That's bad. It's the way he moves. I don't think Chris Durand, he's got the right size, he's got the right stature. But I don't feel Michael Myers here. I just feel the way the hair, like, look, like that doesn't look like Michael Myers. I mean, it looks like Michael Myers, but I'm not like, oh. But that's me. That's me. And again, it's not a terrible movie. It just feels like, like I've always said that Michael Myers walked onto the set of Dawson's Creek, right? And what I mean by that is that Michael Myers just walked onto, it just looks like a, the way everything's lit. It's so bright and and there's no there's no atmosphere. It's just you know not there's no atmosphere, but you know what I mean when I say that. Cody Snyder says, Dave, the scream music I'm pretty sure plays she gets Molly and John out of the closet and they start running outside as Michael's walking down the hall after them. Okay, all right. I'll check that out. Thank you, Cody. And then Andrew Stevens says, uh, first Halloween I saw was age four and 95. I was the only one in my family that liked Michael while everyone else was like Freddie and Jason. Uh, no surprise there. Dia Maria says, I'm, this scene, does Michael actually bang his head on the window? I'm not sure. It's a good question. I'm not sure. And this is silly too, because when she, although I guess you could conjure it up to the fact that she's just seeing it through her own eyes, but. The slaughtered lamb. Oh, we have the slaughtered lamb in the house. Is that Frank or is that Darren? I'm not quite sure. It says, thanks, Cody. We actually put it out last weekend. Amazing. Like, that's clearly Michael walking towards her. I just don't like the way he walks. I hate to say that. He's got the right size, though. Like, the right size. No! <laughs> How many fucking false jump scares can you have in one movie? Like, this, does this not feel like Scream? Or, like, Urban Legend? Or, I know what you did last summer. Or Well, I know what you did last summer has a very sort of different kind of aesthetic look to it because it takes place at a, you know, like a port town or whatever. But, but I mean... Oh, yeah. Everything looks so... Yeah, it looks, the way everything is lit looks very much like a Hallmark movie. You know, like it kind of has that vibe to it a little bit. A little bit. A little bit. I mean, not quite. I mean, it's got a little more atmosphere. But like this right now could be like the, the way it's lit and the soft lighting and stuff. Could just be like he's going home after a romantic dinner. Hello? Hello? Do you want to die tonight, Cece? Hello. What are you doing? Sarah? Molly, I want to know who I'm looking at. So, so that's a bit of a meta thing, obviously. Scream is a, a, a movie in this, in this universe. Which doesn't make any sense. Well, yeah, I guess it kind of does because Halloween is... <laughs> yeah. Okay, all right. All right, I see what they did there. Cody says her arc is better here than in the new ones. Yeah, it's true. Well, her arc's not finished yet either. Um, you know, we'll see what ends delivers. But uh, yeah, no, I, I I agree. I don't like that she chopped off his head, and I don't like the I, I don't like anything about Myers here. But I, I certainly, in terms of her arc, being an alcoholic, running away, I just wish she'd ran away. I just wish she'd ran east instead of west. Let's just put it that way, right? She ran west of California. I wish she would have. Ran, I wish she would have ran east to New York, or come up here to Toronto. You know, take advantage of that midwestern, that that, that fall vibe. 
That Southern Ontario fall vibe. No, let's set it in California. Why? Why California? Was it just because you didn't have to travel because everybody lives in fucking California so you could just shoot it in California? I bet you that was part of it. Because obviously when you have to shoot, you know, you got to pack everything up and, and uh, well, you know, pack everything up, you rent wherever you are. But, but you know what I mean? That wouldn't surprise me. It wouldn't surprise me if that was part of it. I think this is where she... Wait, do I, do I still have the volume up on the fucking movie? Oh, I do too. I turned that down. Forgot about that. <laughs> Gonna get a strike. It's too bad we can't have the volume up on movies. Like as long as you're not showing the picture. It's too bad. But I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it. I do, I do get it. I still, it's still, I still don't own it. I get it. It's just too bad. Then there's some people out there that don't care and they do show the movie. And I'm like, yeah, I don't want to do that. If I didn't have the job I did, maybe I'd do it. But it <laughs> doesn't exactly, uh, doesn't exactly, um, you know, look good if, if I do that, so... Because I certainly, I, 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 I'll be honest with you, I, I, I'd feel the same way. Like if I owned the rights to Black Christmas and I made a sequel called It's Me, Billy, and, and I, like I, I was a studio or something or I owned the rights to it or whatever, and yeah, I'd, I'd be pissed off if somebody was exploiting that and making money off of that without my permission. Yeah, I would. It's not personal, it's business. It's like, fuck, fuck you doing? Making money's the key, making money's the key. I wouldn't care if they were watching it or promoting it or whatever, but can't make money off of it. <laughs> how old is it? Hey, Google, how old is Alan Arkin? Alan Arkin is 87 years old. Okay, no, that's Alan. No, this, this can't be this guy. What's this guy's name? He, um, I said Alan Arkin. It's not Alan Arkin. It's somebody Arkin. Hey, Google, who is Alan Arkin's son? Adam Arkin. Adam, Adam, Adam. Hey, Google, how old is Adam Arkin? He's 65 years old. He's 65. So he's my age here. Adam Arkin is my age here. Okay. He's 42. He looks older than 42, but I think it's because of the gray hair. The, the little salt and pepper hair. You said you'd listen, you fucker. See, there's a lot of there's there's breathing room here that allows for the audience to reconnect with the legacy character, right? Laurie Strode is a legacy character. And because you're watching this conversation take place and you're living vicariously through the nostalgia of the story she's telling, it's allowing you to reconnect to the character. That, that was missing in every legacy character in Halloween Kills. Are you getting it now, Adam Arkin? Cody Snyder says, Alan Arkin, his dad, Adam, looks like knockoff Clooney. Yeah, <laughs> knockoff Clooney. Great value brand Clooney from Walmart. Andrew Stevens says, oh, he's talking to uh, Cody. Dia says, Michael didn't kill Judith when she was 17. She was actually 15. Yeah, that's true because of the tombstone, right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why they said 17. Maybe they said 15, 17 because 15 was a little... It, it was and is. I don't have any children, but I'll be honest with you. If I did and they were having promiscuous sex at 15, not that it doesn't happen, you know, but when you're a parent, you're kind of like, whoa, <laughs> all the fucking hormones there. Um, but...
do you know how much better H2O would be if they justified his eyes, they justified his his burns, they had a better mask, no disrespect to Chris Duran, they had a better actor, uh, and uh, they um, and it was set in the Midwest. It was set or East, and you could take place in the fall and all that kind of stuff. And she's just out on a date right now. She's not the headmistress of a, of a school. You get rid of that. You get rid of that. And she's just, she's a mom. She's at home. Maybe she just has a regular job at a, I don't know, at a, a drugstore or something working retail or something like that. Because you would think that, you know, being the head mistress, being the head mistress of a, of a posh private school is pretty high profile. I would think that to remain low profile, she'd want to just have a sort of just a normal life. Like she just works retail. And I, I just mean like she just has a an, an unassuming job. You know, she works at a, she's a cashier at, at Walmart. She's a cashier at a drugstore or, or maybe she's got a little bit of a job of that. Maybe she just works like, you know, an office job or, or something. You know, but I'm at that, that would be kind of interesting. There's no reason to get upset yet. Let's just calm down. <laughs> Andrew Stevens says H2O would be a better movie if it never existed. <laughs> it's amazing how people get so offended. Somebody could say to me, you know, fucking Halloween would be... Well, no, I don't think they'd ever say that. But what's a movie I really like? Um, I don't know. But if somebody did say, you know, Halloween's fucking overrated and the world would be better if Halloween never existed. That wouldn't offend me. And, and, and they're dead serious. I'd be like, <laughs> can you imagine? Halloween just never existed. Just never existed. Like, why does it appear I'm the, why does it appear I'm the only one that can fucking laugh and just have fun with, just have fun, you know? I don't know. I just don't get it. People get, <laughs> take this shit way too seriously. <laughs> to calm down we're just all having fun i had one guy andrew i don't know if you're still in the chat i had one guy uh message me and was like i can't believe you're gonna burn that halloween five when that guy was nice enough to give it to you i'm like uh, it's a joke i'm not gonna burn halloween five whenever i do that hey, listen if i had like multiple copies of it maybe i might but i'm not, I'm not gonna do that it's a joke. I'm, I'm playing. It's a. It's a. It's a. It's a. It's a shtick. It's a skit. It's. It's just fun. I'm just fucking around. I'm. God, people take shit so seriously. I just don't get it. <laughs> I just don't get it. Oh, we're coming up to the. Uh, we're, oh, we're coming up to the CG mask. Here comes the CG mask. It's come. Oh my god, this is going to be terrible. Here comes the CG mask, folks. Misdirect. You think that Michael's going to turn? I would never put my hand down there. Never. I would get something to get it out. I would never stick my fucking hand down there. Of course, this is just to create suspense, right? But I would get something like a, a knife or a fork to hit the... It's unnecessary to use, to use your hand. Here comes the CGI mask. Here it comes. Here it comes. Oh! Oh, it's so bad and so unnecessary. There was no need to even show that shot. I'm surprised. Well, no, this would cost money. Uh, you could totally go back in and deep fake that shit. But then if you're going to deep fake, you might as well deep fake the whole movie. But I'll, I'll tell you right now, there was no need to them to even cut back to him. You showed him. Actually, it, it would have been more effective when he turned around and looked at him because you did see him briefly as he turned around and then just cut to his eyeball where you see his reflection in the eyeball like they had. There, there was no need to cut back to this. I never would have let that pass. I would have been so pissed as a director, and maybe Minor was, I don't know. But if the studio had said to me, no, 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 that's good, yeah, that's good, we'll use it, I would be so fucking pissed. I would. I'd be like, are you kidding me? This looks like dog shit. It looked like dog shit in 98. It looks like dog shit now. I would have been so angry. So angry. There he is. This doesn't feel like Michael to me. It just doesn't.
Like, is it just me? And maybe it's just me, but do, uh, folks in the chat and people watching after the fact, does this feel like Michael to you? It doesn't feel like Michael to me. We're really missing the Halloween music in this movie. I will say that. I will say that. For me. Ooh, crunch, crunch, crunch. But I will say, ooh, I hate seeing his eyes. Although I don't like the mask and I don't like the movie really. I say really because, you know, there's a few moments that are all right, but... Um, I will say the reunion between Michael and Lori, when Michael shuts the door and looks through through the uh, through the round window there, it is. And I've always thought this: it's a much better reunion moment than um, than what we had in eighteen. Yeah, I think Lori and Michael should have had a stronger reunion moment in eighteen. I like the way she said that. Oh, f oh, fuck. I like that. It felt real. Like she was like, oh, fuck. But I, I never understood this. Who is this guy? Is he Michael Myers? Who is this guy? <laughs> Who is this guy? Hey, Google, how old is Chris Durand? I don't know if they even should know. 58. So yeah, he's 58. So he's 35. He's too young. He's too young. Michael should be 41. I mean, there's not much of a difference between 35 and 41, but he's too young. The actor, I know, I know, I know, I know. Nitpick. Dave, how come you nitpick all this, but you don't nitpick the original? The original has problems too. Yeah, it does. But it's more forgivable because, and you want to know why it's more forgivable? Because it was a movie shot for $325,000 that was supposed to do nothing. When I mean nothing, it wasn't supposed to be this. Sometimes lower budgets are better because you focus on story and every dollar counts and there's no shortcuts. That's cool though. I do like seeing her hanging like that. That's a, that's a cool image. That's a cool image. I hate the way he's standing there with his legs wide apart and the knife in hand. He just kind of, it's cosplayer to me. Maybe I'm just seeing too, maybe there's just too many people dressed up as Michael Myers. Last night I was, I, I was at White's in Toronto uh, watching a screening of It's Me, Billy. And, and um, there was a guy there that was dressed up as Michael Myers, you know, and made sense obviously being that it's the Friday before Halloween. But maybe we're just so used to seeing everybody dressed up as Michael Myers now that when I, when I see I don't know. There's something about Michael in this movie specifically that looks like just a cosplayer dressed as Michael. <sighs> There's no atmosphere here. It's just right in the middle of this path. It's, I don't know. Yeah, it's very different soundtrack, isn't it? It's just a run. And look at this mask. That's the different mask there. He's got a different mask on there. He's got that old mask. <laughs> when he came out of the bushes there, he's got the old mask. Tab of the Short says he is not Michael Myers. He is the paramedic. Oh, well, no, no. It's the paramedic at the end of the movie. He is Michael, but just before... He 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 doesn't make the switch until until later. But I, I I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. I'm just teasing you. Andrew Stevens says he is not even burned at all. At least H four con uh, continuation is more accurate. This is sure. Yeah, no, he's not. He's not burned at all. He can see perfectly fine. He's not burned. There isn't a mark on him. They never found his body. He's using keys. 
There's so many different shots even within here that it's the other mask. That, there, there. And now it's this mask. This isn't near... That's cool when she takes out the gun and he's just gone. That's cool. That's Michael's MO. Or part of his MO. But this... They, they, like, the different shots they use, he looked different quite a few times. I don't know which mask is better. Because looking at that other mask, I remember in one of the trailers or one of the promotional images for Halloween H2O early, they used that mask. I don't know. They just should have stuck with the H6 mask as far as I'm concerned. Tabitha says it was a joke. Oh, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I know. What do we do? What do we do? Try to live. It's a little cringy. It's totally Michael Myers. But no, for some reason it's it's, it's LL Cool J. Dia says, all these masks are horrid. Yeah. I'm trying to think of what... The, I think the H6 mask probably is the best... And it's not saying much. It probably is the best mask in the original run outside of the original film. Probably is. Four is terrible. Five is terrible. H2O is terrible. Yeah. I love this. Yeah, yeah. And I agree with Darren. Why is he vibrating? <laughs> Why is he? <laughs> Why is he vibrating? I know it's it, it's extra. It, it's, it's like, oh, fuck. I get it. I, I understand it. It's not like I've ever been stabbed in the back and, and lifted off my feet. I just don't like his mask. It's too silly to me. Andrew Stephen says, the other script for this movie sounds more entertaining than what we really got. I'd have to read it. I don't think I've ever read it. Dia says, that's clearly Michael who walks up. It is. It's clearly. I love how he backs out. And, and that's the other mask, isn't it? That No, 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 it's not. No, it's not. I hate this shot of him from behind this low angle power shot as he's walking towards the camera. You can see his eye. His eye holes are too fucking big. So this here is from Scream? Oh, and there's the other mask. Holy jeez, I've never noticed how many times it's a different mask on his face. I've never noticed this. This is funny. I've actually never noticed this before. That's the other mask. Now it's now it's the new mask. That's the other mask. I think. That's the other or that the new Holy shit. And now it's the current mask. You know what? There needs to be a drinking game. How many times do they switch back? Because obviously, how many times do they take footage from you know the reshoots and, and the other... <laughs> I wonder how many times they do that. Oh, yes, that's the Scream user. Okay. I don't know Scream well enough to be able to know that. I mean, I, I know that that exists, that apparently they use the same, but I, I don't, you know, I'm not a huge Scream fan, so... I like Scream. I like the first Scream. I do. Don't really like the sequels. I'll be right behind you. What am I, Emperor Palpatine? Good. I can feel your anger. But I will say, though, Lori has run, and now she's choosing to fight, you know, which is something she did. She ran in Halloween. Well, I mean, she fought a little bit when she was in the closet, right? But again, for all intents and purposes, she ran in the first movie, she ran in the second movie, and she ran away from her life. And now she's choosing to fight. And and I do say that that, that is, 
you know, it's it, it's more defined. It, it's more defined. Her arc is more defined and more clear in H2O. Uh, it, not so much in the new series, at least yet. Some people love that moment. Some people get goosebumps when she yells out, my God. There are, there's a huge portion of the population out there that still believe that they think that this is, is, should have been the definitive ending. I just wish they didn't show his fucking eyes and that it was shot somewhere else and that it had a different story and it was just a different movie. <laughs> and I hate him coming down like that with one hand. I don't like that. I'm just not a fan of that. Can you imagine how cool this scene would be, though, if Michael looked like he used to look? Can you imagine? Michael! Michael! As Dr. Lewis would say. But of course, you know, four, five, and six don't exist in this, in this timeline. Boy, they really... Where do you, who is this? Maybe, maybe it's not Michael. Maybe it, is, maybe it is just a crazy fan. Maybe this really is just a crazy fan. Andrew Stevens says, Dave, if you were to read it, you would laugh your ass off. It's a joke of a script. Taking shape too, I still owe you. Would have you question the whole Halloween universe? Yeah, well, you know what? I will definitely look for that in Taking Shape 2 then or whatever whatever book it's in or whatever. For, for sure, yeah, I'm definitely going to do that. He's on top of the table. And that's cool. I mean, you know, this this moment where the knife comes through the through the table is always cool. Well, it's not not yet, but it's gonna happen. This is yeah, this is after True Lies. I think this is the movie she did after True Lies. Was there a four year gap or did she do something in between? Maybe she did My Girl, maybe, or My Girl Two, or I don't know, she did something else. She looks good here though. She looks in shape. Oh, and that, and that, and there's the other mask. There's the other mask. Holy, I've never noticed this before. I have never noticed how many times they bounce around. I, Jesus Christ. Latter-day Saints. <laughs> wow. I never noticed it. That's fucking wild, man. Throw those knives at him. Throw them. Doesn't one, doesn't one hit him or something? <sighs> oh, right in the balls. You see his eyes. How does he have eyes? Can somebody tell me how he has eyes though? When Dab this says, I think Dave complains more about H2O than resurrection. I don't think so. I think it's because I'm, I've just exhausted my complaints for Halloween resurrection. I haven't, I haven't really talked a lot about H2O. And like I said, it's a competently made movie. You know, I can understand why people like it. It's fun. The battle between Laurie and Michael, you actually get a battle between them. And there he goes onto the table. Ooh, that was cool. That was cool. I like that. That was cool. And you get a battle between them. Like, I understand it. Like, I, I get why fans like this movie. I totally understand it. Um, there's, it just doesn't feel like a Halloween movie. It just feels like like she could be playing a different character. She is for all. I mean, she's you know, I mean, she's not. But I think you know what I mean. Where was Michael for twenty years? Well, they never found his body. Yeah, but he can see. They never found his body. Yeah, but he's not burned or anything. He's like completely normal. Well, they, have, they never found his body. Well, yeah, but how was he eating for 20 years? Where did he stay? Did he have a job? I mean, he looks remarkably well. Hey, all I know is they never found his body. And it's like, okay. All right. <laughs> okay. All right. Doesn't he get up here or is this... She's conquered her demons, folks. Well, not yet. God, 
it makes you realize how important that mask is to this character. When you have a shitty mask, and I know people like H2O's mask, but when you have some, I'm telling you, man. So right now, Michael Myers is getting buck naked. Now, now, oh, okay, well, he, he, he's already done it. That's not Michael Myers there. That's a paramedic. Yeah, that's a paramedic. And uh, Michael is currently walking off into the bushes right now. He's walking off into the bushes. You know, I will say, I will say, Lori's a bit of a badass. I mean, she's, she... She doesn't start as a badass, but she certainly becomes a bit of a badass in this movie. I mean, I am going to say that. She's not like the same kind of badass as Laurie in 18, but she's certainly a badass. You know, she fucking took the cop's gun, took an axe, stole the fucking van, rolls the van down a fucking hill. Like, I mean, I don't know. I mean, listen, I give credit where credit is due and that that's 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 a badass move. I'm just saying. Here comes the paramedic. He's trying to come alive now. <laughs> He's got the same body shape, though, as Michael Myers. Andrew Stevens says, at least Resurrection keeps the same mask throughout the whole film. I just want to know who's selling the mask. It's true. It's true. The mask in the Resurrection looks like it's almost got like... Yeah. He's trying to get out. He's like, oh, I got to get out of here. I'm a paramedic. I got to get I got to get out of here. I'm just a fucking paramedic. She knew. It was such a stupid move. Okay, now watch this. Watch the way he sits up here. This is, he, he sits up, he sits up like he's just, I know he's just been hit through a window, but this is supposed to be his, 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 his sit up. Watch this. It's like he's just f finished an all night bender. Look, ugh, oh, fuck. Ugh. Oh, I hate it. I hate the way he looks. It just looks so bad. I can't believe people like this. It's all right. It's all right. Lori's a badass. So look at it. She's fucking. Oh, 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 man. There it is. The paramedic doesn't decide to take off his mask at any point or anything. She throws herself over too. She throws herself over. That shit's going down right now. She's throwing herself over and then he's going to get hit with the van. I think of the tree, right? Here it comes. Here it comes. Oh, he does that. That was a hell of a hit. Hell of a hit, folks. I'm telling you, hell of a hit. Man, oh, man. And I hate the whole, like, reaching out and touching hands thing. I know. Halloween fans, right? Halloween H2O fans right now are like, Dave, it's good, it's good. Don't make fun of my movie. I know, I know, I know. It's It sucks. It sucks when... You know, people make fun of the sh you know the shit you like. I get it. I get it. I get it. But my criticisms are not unfounded. Like I'm not making fun of dumb stuff. Like, oh look, she just picked up the fucking axe. No, no, no. I'm, at least I can, I can, I can justify. I can, I can speak to the things I don't like and why I don't like them. Now, those things may not bother you as an H2O fan, um, and that's fair. That's fine. But at least you know, I, I always believe that you can talk smack about anybody. When I say anybody, I don't mean like, you know, like your friends or something. But I mean like, you know, actors or characters or, you know, whatever. And you can talk smack about any movie. Any movie is game. As long as you can justify it. You can, you can, you can, uh, uh, you know, um, intellectualize and articulate, articulate, articulate your thoughts in a, in a mature way. Um, you know? It's game. Why isn't he fucking taking, why isn't he taking off the mask? If this is really the paramedic, take off the mask. Here it comes. He's reaching out. I'm just a paramedic. I'm just a paramedic. 
fucking touch your head, Michael. I'm gonna fucking touch your head right now, baby. Oh, this is like God reaching out, like that famous painting. God, the hands are going. That's here it comes. She sees the evil in his eyes, and then she realizes, wait a minute, your eyes are perfectly fine. Oh yeah. <laughs> and of course there's the original Halloween theme. Now with the beat, mind you, the ish, 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 ish is in there. But that is the original Halloween theme. Ah, it's weird. I don't know, man. I don't know. You know. Ish. It's a fun movie. It's a, it's a, it's fun. Now, when I say fun movie in, I mean the sense of that it's entertaining, of course, right? You can watch it. You're not bored. Um, you know, it's, I don't know. It just feels like it should have been more. It didn't feel like Halloween. It didn't look like Halloween. I still feel the same way about H2O as I did 23 years ago. So, you know, this is not stuff that I'm pulling out of my ass. This is not stuff. This is not me jumping on any bandwagon because it's cool. I thought I've, Everything I think about the Halloween movies and the Halloween series and franchise and all the movies, I've always thought for years, long before YouTube existed, you know, so, um, but I, I will say that I do understand why it's a fan favorite. I do understand why people really like it. Uh, we can actually measure it really. I mean, we can point to, for a lot of people, like I mentioned, it was not only their first Halloween movie they saw in the theater, it might've been their first Halloween movie they ever saw. It was their their introduction into the Halloween franchise, to, to the Halloween world. You know, horror was hot and fun again and uh, popular again, uh, thanks to Scream. So a lot of, you know, young teenagers at that time, if you were, you know, 15, 16, 17, in the mid to late 90s, you you know, it was very popular to go see Scream, Scream 2, Halloween H2O. I know what you did last summer. I still know what you did last summer. Urban Legends. You know, I mean, it was it was a very popular sort of thing. Um, so I understand why there is a nostalgic and there's a love for this movie. And there is argument to be made. Like I said, that she has a arguably a, 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 a more clearly defined arc in this movie than she does in... Um, the new films, but I think we have to keep in mind that the new films, her arc is still is still incomplete. You know, she's still completing that arc. So, you know, but I I still feel the same way. It doesn't give me the Halloween feels. It doesn't give me. I I watch this movie and I feel as I'm watching it the same way I feel when I'm watching like Urban Legend, or or um I was gonna say uh what else? I was gonna say that other thing that um. I was going to say species. I was like species. Um, or the same ways that I feel when I'm watching Scream or Scream 2. You know, I, I, why, why was I going to say species? It's a completely different thing. It was a good movie though, by the way. Um, but I, I um, for its time. <laughs> but I, I, yeah, it feels like that. Like I'm watching a late 90s kind of horror. It doesn't feel like Halloween to me, you know? And that's largely to, that's largely to do with setting. You know, uh, soundtrack, Michael Myers, you know? Not, not necessarily the story. I mean, I think if you had set the story, if the story had been the same, but it, instead of it being a California private school, it was, like I said, a New York private school or a private school in, in Maine or, or Massachusetts or, 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 or I don't know, uh, uh, you know, somewhere where you could get the atmosphere of fall, then, um, you know, it, it would improve it. It would improve it and change that mask. It would improve it. Cody Snyder says, had to catch the new SLMP. Oh, but I'm back. The man beneath the man beneath. Oh, sl SLMP. Uh, Tabitha says, maybe. I think five gets it more than anything else. Well, five's just fun to poke fun at because um, <laughs> I just like having fun. I just like having fun. Yeah. Five's the low hanging fruit. That's why. Five's the low hanging fruit. H2O. If I started to poke fun at, eight, at H2O the way I do five, you'd see a lot of people get very angry. <laughs> 
<laughs> but then there's some people out there that get it, right? There's some people out there that totally get it, that understand it. I'm just, I'm just busting people's balls. I'm just having fun. I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm being truthful with how I feel about the movie, but I'm not like I'm not saying you're an idiot if you like it. You know, I completely understand why you like it. It makes total sense to me. There's movies I like too that people are probably like, you're actually gonna like that, you know? Fuck, I like Thunder Force. You know that movie that just came out with um, Octavia Spencer and Melissa McCarthy? It was getting the shit kicked out of it by by reviews. I watched it with my girlfriend. I'm like, it's fine. It was it was funny. I mean, especially since it was directed. I believe it was directed by her husband Ben Falcone, and she hasn't. She doesn't have a great track. I think Melissa McCarthy is. I love her. I think she's amazing. And Octavia Spencer, I love her too. I think she's fantastic. And I actually enjoy it. I'm not saying I'm not saying it's the greatest comedy of all time, but I don't think it's nearly as bad as people are making it out to be. I th especially because it was her husband that directed it. And her husband, I think it was her husband that directed it. He also directed her in Tammy. Ugh, not very good. Uh, the Boss, which I actually thought was okay. Um, and then there was another one he directed her in too. Um, but anyway, she's really, she's got to get away from her husband as a director, but... I like Thunder Force. I like Thunder Force. I'm just saying. I thought I don't when I say I like it, I'm not like, oh, I'm just fucking amazing. I'm just saying I enjoyed it. I'll I'll own that. I'll own that for sure. You know, like, you like what you like, folks. You like what you like. Tabitha says, I like H2O better than five. Well, there you go. Uh I think I I think in a ranking I might have H2O higher than five, but I don't know. I don't know. Because it depends on what we're measuring, right? Um, anyway, uh, Cody says, I like H6 more than H2O, but H2O way more than five. Okay, I gotcha. I gotcha. I hear you. I hear you. Um, anyways, folks, listen, that's going to do it for this episode of Saturday Movie Night, episode 32, watching Halloween H2O. If you're watching after the fact and you've made it this far, uh, um, this far, comment below and let me know your thoughts on Halloween H2O. Where were you when you first watched this movie? Was this the first Halloween movie you ever saw? Was this the first Halloween movie you ever saw in the movie theater? Or maybe it was both. Maybe it was all, it was the first Halloween film you saw and also the first Halloween movie you saw in the movie theater. Tell me your H2O stories. I would love to know. Uh, folks, have a great rest of your Saturday night. Um, happy Halloween to you all out there. Of course, I will be live tomorrow night at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time with Tony Michael. We are watching Halloween Kills live on Halloween night. We are bringing this Halloween-a-thon, oh my goodness, I'm going to need a break after this, to a close tomorrow night. And don't forget, over at the Slaughtered Land Movie Podcast, Frank and Darren are watching Halloween 18 at 3 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So you have a bit of a double feature there. You can watch them watch Halloween 18 and watch Watch Tony and I watch Halloween Kills and watch along with us. So don't forget to do that. And thank you for your continued support to the channel each and every month. It is greatly appreciated. I think you guys are amazing, uh, but you know that. You know how awesome you are. And if you are unable to tune in tomorrow night to uh, the Two Dude Show, stay safe out there. Have a great Halloween. And uh, yeah, I will, uh, I'll talk to you guys soon. All righty. Take care, folks. Talk to you soon. Cheers.